I'd like to mention that governments in Melanesia may actually end up becoming enemies and competing against each other for when they are globalizing and trying to sell things to different countries. So that will jeopardize their relationship. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> to succeed in the globalized world means, in the developed world means economy-wise is what your first speaker defined it as. But I, me and my team choose to disagree because the topic does not state in the developed world or success or success economy-wise, it states success, therefore, success is relative. It's not just talking about money. Allow me to tell you a story. A woman in the market aims to sell two island dresses by the end of the day. But by that time, she actually ends up selling five dresses. She is overjoyed, and in her own eyes, she is successful. However, to a business person in the USA, this would be seen as anything but a success. People of Melanesia, as our first speaker mentioned, success is relative. Success cannot be justifiably measured in one single way. We can only measure success based on how richer countries define it, which is essentially that success equals large sums of money. That's incorrect. <laughs> success means achieving goals that you have set for yourself. Success can also mean achieving a personal goal of happiness which don't require things like phones or TV that globalization brings, but instead can be accomplished by less material things in life, such as dancing, singing, laughing, and spending time with family and friends. In Indonesia, we cannot limit ourselves in our thinking. My next point brings up to the harsh reality we have to face if we plan to globalize, the clear evidence of consequences on the environment. If we choose to globalize in order to succeed, we are choosing to ignore the fact that there are huge repercussions to the environment. Think about this. Who are the biggest contributors to global warming and pollution in this day and age? Globalized countries. We must be careful, Melanesia, because remember, nature does not need us. We need nature in order to survive. So ponder this question. Do you genuinely think this is a success? Because I don't think so. Take for, example, take, for example, Nauru, the beautiful country that was once filled with resources of false faith is now a dirty wasteland where 80% of it is uninhabitable. However, Melanesia, let's shift to a happier topic, us. Vanuatu has been at the top of the ladder in terms of happiness globally before. Doesn't this provide enough evidence that we do not need, global, need to globalize in order to succeed? That really is the beauty of our Melanesian countries that we can succeed on so many different levels other than globalizing. For example, achieving happiness through laughter of family, earning respect from an elder, and learning to speak your own language are all ways of succeeding without globalizing. My next point leads us back to our roots here in Melanesia. Melanesian culture is extremely unique. For example, in PNG alone, which is the small size of the state of California, houses 820 indigenous languages. People, that is 11% of all the languages in the entire world. Not to mention that Vanuatu is considered to be the country with the highest language density per capita in the world. Now, think audience. All of these languages, each one unique to the particular area and people there can be lost and forgotten by a seemingly innocent act of globalization. See, what happens is people become more interested in newer, more seemingly interesting things instead of learning their tradition and language. These new things are great, but we shouldn't sacrifice such a deep and sacred culture for them. It is not worth it, Melanesia. Open your eyes. In 30 years, do you want your children to know nothing about their roots? To think that something so special is not as important as a, say, music video? How is this a success? I don't see it. globalization, cultures begin to blend into one and lose their uniqueness. The contours that originally made, say, PNG's culture begin differ from American culture, begin to fade and break away. Eventually, cultures begin to mix into something different than diversity, and they all become the same. Globalization also brings with it alternatives to traditional food. Take, for example, a regular meal in the market here in Vanuatu and freshly caught fish on top of manure and greens complete with fresh coconut water. <laughs> a healthy lunch that supports local people. Instead, globalization brings things like Coca-Cola, McDonald's, and Twisties. 
unhealthy foods with little to no nutritional intake that support the richer, bigger countries and knock the locals out of business. Remember, Melanesia, the grass always looks greener on the other side. In this case, a globalized city such as Port Vila may seem very attractive to somebody out in the islands. New jobs, education, and health opportunities. So they move here, and when they get here, what do they find? They find out that they are paid low wages in bad conditions to serve the rich countries who have essentially plagued them. Education and health? No way they'd be able to afford that with their salaries. So people, wake up! Globalized culture is only a negative, no. On the contrary, we simply be believe it would be such a substantial loss to forget something as important as our Melanesian culture. In conclusion, we firmly believe that seeing glo globalization as a necessity for success is not only incorrect, but it is so, so limiting. We must open our minds. We must open our eyes to the things that lie directly in front of us. The things we may take for granted, family, friends, laughter, and see the success that lies within them. Napoleon Hill says, the starting point of all achievement is desire, and we agree. We must finally open up avenues to achieve our individual desires in order to succeed.